All right, so uh, for this problem, it says to use the law of sines, right? So we've got to use the law of sines to do this. So the first thing I always want to do, whenever I'm going to be working on these types of problems, very nice checkerboard. So before I'm going to be doing this, what I want to do is see, just draw a triangle that would kind of mimic what this looks like. So it looks like I have two acute angles. So I'll draw some like this, and I'll say here's A, here's B, um, A is 55 degrees, B is going to be 42 degrees, C, I don't know what it is, but I know what the length is. So it says use the law of sines. Well, the law of sines, as we remember it, is A over sine of A equals B over sine of B equals C over sine of C as lowercase a, b, and c are the side lengths of your triangle, and uppercase a, b, and c are your angles. Now, to do this, we have to have a, we have to have a proportion with at least you know, three of our values and find for one. Well, I, ha I have to have at least the angle and its opposing side, which would be here's a, here's little b, and here's little c, right? Because your side length is always opposing of your angle. So the problem that comes in here, Cindy, is I don't, have a si I don't have an angle and it's opposing side length. Angle, no opposing side length. I have the opposing side length and then I don't have the angle. So I can't apply the law of sines as this problem is. However, I can use a little intuitive sense and look at it and say, well, I am given two angles of my triangle, so I can figure out what the side length of C is, or I'm sorry, the angle of C, right? So we just gotta think a little bit um, to think about, oh, well, I can figure out what the sine of C is. So all I do is sine of our angle C is equal to 180 degrees minus 55 minus 42. And so those two added up together give me 97. So therefore, C is going to equal 83 degrees, right? Put all the degrees in there. So C equals 83 degrees. So now, I can apply the law of sines. So I'm actually going to do it twice. So since I have these two and I have both of these angles, I'm just going to set it up. I'll say, um, set of 3 fourths, I'm just going to convert it to a decimal. All right? It's pretty easy to convert 3 fourths to a decimal. So I'll just use it as a decimal because I'm going to be primarily using my calculator. Sine of 83 equals A over sine of 55. And let's do that again, 0.75 over sine of 83 equals B over sine of 42. So I'm going to do both these problems, one for finding A, one for finding B. So the next thing to remember is cross multiply. <clears throat> so when I cross multiply and then isolate my variable, I'll have... I'm going to just kind of skip a couple steps, right? Because I've kind of shown this before. Is that okay? So cross multiply, I'll get um, A equals these two multiplied by each other. So 0.75 times sine of 55. And then when I have to isolate this variable A, I'm going to have to divide by sine of 83. Okay? So A equals. And then this one, when I solve for B, I'll have 0.75 times sine of 42 divided by sine of 83. So let's just use our handy dandy calculator. 0.75 times sine of 55 divided by sine of 83. Here I get 0 0.61 and I'll, re and I'll round to the hundredth. So I have 0.62, uh, and then for B, when I do 0.75 times sine of 42 divided by sine of 83, I get 0.5, round to the nearest one, that's 0.51. So therefore, B equals... 0.51, A equals 0.62. I double check, make sure all my angles add up to 180, which they do. 
and then I take a look at my side lengths, and do my side lengths kind of make sense? Do they kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah, they should, right? Here's my largest angle, produces the largest side, which obviously makes sense. This one produces the largest side than that one, right? Because the angle is going to project the largest side. So, therefore, that's how we do that. Thing.